there's a line about education where he says, what is it but, you know, older birds teaching younger birds to fly? And I think that that seems to capture the way in which moral formation, moral education is really an apprenticeship um, of in the art of doing human being well. What does it look like to be a good human being? What is the art of doing human well? And it has a lot to do with apprenticeship, imitation, um, relationship, friendship, as you were just noting. And increasingly in education, because of the, you know, the, the speed toward efficiency and the cost of things, the scale of it, the digitization of learning, we feel, I think, the tension of can we keep that work of education, which is very relational, very, very formative, alive. What do you what do you think Lewis's diagnosis of contemporary higher education would be? Obviously, that's a massive question, and there's a zillion different <laughs> forms of higher education going on. But where would Lewis think it's going well and not so well, do you think? Yeah, I think he would just despair at the, at the trends which have only increased in the decades since his death. It's interesting, even when he was, <clears throat> you know, a fairly middle-aged academic, before he reached the end of his life, he, he wrote to his godson, uh, Lawrence Harwood, who had just been ejected from Oxford um, mm. for failing his, his um, what we call moderations. He, he'd failed his first year exams, and so he had to leave Oxford. And Lewis wrote him this marvellous letter, a consoling, wise letter, very much in the tradition of old birds teaching young birds how to fly, saying, you, you probably feel that your, your life is in ruins at this moment. You've just been ejected from Oxford. But um, the, this idea that everything that's of value can be examined and measured is a fairly new one. Um, <laughs> you know, Oxford University for a long time did not have written exams. Um, you might have to defend your ideas in, in some sort of viva, some viva voce, some live voice exam. Mm -hmm. um, and you'd obviously have to show that you were, you know, reasonably intelligent to maintain your place in the university. But you wouldn't have to tick all sorts of boxes and, and satisfy the examiners in all sorts of hoop jumping exercises uh, just to prove that you were a, a validly intelligent person. Mm. And, you know, it's interesting, Lewis and indeed Tolkien and that, that whole generation of scholars, they didn't have doctorates. He was never Dr. Lewis. At least he didn't earn doctorates. He, he, gave, he was given several doctorates, but he, you didn't do PhDs in those days. And, and Lewis rather looked down on those who did them. Um, there used to be this degree at Oxford called the B Lit, a Bachelor of Letters. And he once said there are three kinds of literacy there's the literate, there's the illiterate, and then there's the B literate. Um, those who got the B lit, they, they go into some sort of strange third space, which is neither literate nor illiterate, illiterate. Um, because it's jargon. It's, you're learning more and more about less and less at just that point in your life, your mid-twenties, when you should be expanding and, and getting a universal education. That's why it's a university that you're part of. Uh, and you become, you become a research beetle instead. Um, his disparaging term for those who went into postgraduate research. Um, and yeah, as I say, that, that whole trajectory has just got worse and steeper since his death. Mm. And I think he would, just, he would roll his eyes. He'd be rolling in his grave if he knew what was going on in, and in, not just in university life, but in, in high schools too. And, and well, all the way down to the earliest ages now, children are getting measured from, you know, the cradle onwards, it's preposterous.